10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Fuel community. My name is Wack. today is May 30th, and um, we've got a really quick episode for you all today. So let's get started with this um, Aave post that Mark Zeller made. It says, increase supply caps for LSTs on Aave version 3. So this is um, something that I've been waiting for, that I've been wanting to get information for. So um, I... Um, <laughs> reached out to Mark and he said that basically um, it's in the process and now we need to reach out to their um, safety teams to get that information. So what do we have here? We have this post that Mark put up yesterday saying increase supply caps for LSTs and Aave version 3 and he says the uh, the Aave like a uh, comment a uh, request for comment uh, proposes an increase in the supply caps of several liquid staking tokens across multiple networks including uh, STETH, RETH and S AVAX. The um, proposed changes are within limits of the risk stewards um, and are requested uh, for enforcement by them. So this is Mark made this post to get information from the risk stewards to find out what's going on. Um, so he has the uh, abstract here says supply caps for several STs have reached or nearing their current limits to ensure that the continued smooth operation of the protocol and to accommodate growing demand. This um, a request for comment proposes to increase these caps. The proposed increase ranges from 50 to 100 percent depending on the asset and network. So there's motivation that basically like we want to keep using them and start have people using uh, layer twos more as well. Specification here it says these are as follows. So there's um, increases on Ethereum layer one for ST ETH and R ETH. For STETH, they want to go up from 200,000 STETH to 300,000 STETH as new cap. For RETH, we're currently at cap at 20,000, and the idea is to increase the cap by 100% uh, uh, to 40,000. And then there's STETH and Arbitrum, Optimism, Optimism and Polygon, and the S AVAX token, that's the Lido staked AVAX token on Avalanche Network as well on the Avalanche Network. So, um, of these, um, you know, the idea is to increase uh, our ETH on um, layer one by 100%. So that's 20,000 new um, our ETH uh, tokens being able to be minted. Um, and um, that's what the, the proposal is to ask the risk stewards to uh, increase the amounts. And then the next steps, um, it says, you know, collect feedback and the risk service and figure it out and, and go forward from there. So we've already had um, some comments here. You know, uh, Kini from Stable Lab says this proposal is necessary for Aave to continue leveraging the demand for LSTs. And then Chaos Labs, one of the risk stewards, got back saying for WST ETH and R ETH on Ethereum and WST ETH and Optimism, we support the updated updates above as we recommend here and here. So those are um, the piece of information that they're already supporting. Next, we need to hear from... Um, we need to hear from Gauntlet Network, um, who I mentioned on the show yesterday as well about the the RPL information that they gave about the the update for um, um, RPL token being listed and like their safety parameters. So that you know this this is firmly in their in their wheelhouse now. I I hope that they are able to. Um, increase that like soon um i guess this process might take a week i'm guessing like once um gauntlet people get back and um, say that they're okay with it and then they'll have to go to a vote and then it will be turned on um so you know there could be the capacity of getting up to forty thousand R ETH very soon um mark and i i think both agree that that 20,000 will be filled very very quickly so I guess then we'll have to go through this process again um, so Mark if you are watching this I'm going to be bothering you a lot in the coming days and weeks <laughs> but um, yeah thank you for all the work that you're doing with this okay next we have some news about the Rocketeers so we kind of hinted at this yesterday with a mentor making a poll about you know um, Rocketeers but then we we got some more information after the episode went out so mentors heard the cat is out of the bag Rocketeers are getting a new generation and here's what is public so far some Rocketeers followed breadcrumbs in chatter and found the new Rocketeers are logic bot styled and made by logic beach the minting uh, will launch soon the new generation celebrates rocket pools atlas launch but was delayed and um, want more information if you guess something from the poem in chatter you get pre-launch alpha so of course logic beach is one of my favorite artists i absolutely love logic beach and the work that um, logic beach does and um, i really like um, their art style i own a few logic beach nfts um, 
really really great stuff so that is uh, fantastic and uh, the sneak peek that i got of the art from this round like it really shows that this is like logic beach's work which is definitely a huge positive so that's really cool um, let's have a look at the poem where you might be able to get some alpha it says in celestial realms a rocketeer source with progeny a legacy he adores um, robots of logic minds keen and bright inheriting traits reaching for starlight their circuits ablaze with reason refined their journeyed seeking truths undefined but rocketeer longed for warmth and affection emotions blending with their stellar direction he shared tales of passion love's fiery embrace fueling their hearts with celestial grace in unity they discovered the universe's art uh, logic and heart forever entwined never apart so people can like um, picking out like couplets from this poem and trying to um, get get some information so um you know here Kara was the first one to say uh, logic bot babies from like the last line logic and heart and they said yes the the poems were made but the uh, designs were made by logic beach and then other people like kind of guessed other information as well so um yeah it's a really nice really nice thing like um the artwork of course is is lovely and um well you guys haven't seen that yet i think it's lovely uh but um the the whole idea of Roger, the, um, Rocketeers is one that I support wholeheartedly and I absolutely love the Rocketeers so I'm really excited about seeing this drop and here as well um, um, Mentor says um, uh, that they'll be on layer one and he says bonus alpha minting will be gas only so there'll be no cost you just pay the gas to mint um, so I think this last time I only minted one Rocketeer I think this time I'm going to be minting a whole lot more Rocketeers because I really love them. So um, I, I'm, I'm positioning myself to be a nicely sized Rocketeer holder if possible. The now then when the first batch of Rocketeers were released, um, there were only a few left by the time I was getting in on, on the Rocketeers um, when I first joined Rocket Pool community. Um, so there weren't that many left. So I didn't really fully understand the utility of it at the time as well. Not that there is utility, it's just nice for community aspect of it. But this time, you know, I'm definitely going to be minting a lot. Um, and if I mint a lot and they're all sold out, then I might um, give out some to um, to um, listeners, which would be really nice. So, yeah. Okay, um, next we have this article that was from... Um, coin codex comparing lido versus rocket pool saying lido versus rocket pool which stake each staking solution is best so then they have you know table of contents they explain lido they explain rocket pool they explain the key differences they do comparison charts and they say which one should you choose as a conclusion um so you know they kind of break down into lido they say how it's the most popular it's the biggest they how the token works um what you can do with it where it can work and like all the different places that you can have it and what uh, lido also do outside of ethereum um you know other blockchains like polygon solana polkadot uh, and korsama blockchains then with rocket pool it says you know it's ethereum based liquid staking protocol that's focused on decentralization and trustlessness rocket pool staking system utilizes a token called RETH, um which um you know can be traded uh, on um on um decentralized exchanges etc and can be minted and stuff so there's just information there the key difference is this is here one of the key differences between lido and rocket pool is that lido has permission set of validators while rocket pool is permissionless in this regard this means that anyone can join rocket pool as a validator while only pre-approved validators are allowed on lido so that's like of course a big key difference and then they go in there and explain some of the other key differences such as um like uh, how many uh, entities there are on uh, lido like there's only 30 and then of course in rocket pool there's like i think 2700 now like some huge number um they explain that you know the the smaller market share um rocket pool is just uh, around three percent of staked amount and it's just under just over 10 percent of lido basically so um they're comparing those and then here we've got a full-on comparison chart like you know let's check how they stack up against each other so their tokens and then their supply so um total stake eth on lido is 6.8 million on rocket pool is 688 000. uh commission and staking rewards is for lido 10 percent for rocket pool 15 percent. but that number is obviously coming down as more and more people go to leb8 so that's going to trend towards 14 percent APR for stakers, Lido 4.9%, Rocket Pool 4.03%. That number, of course, is in flux, so it changes around. Uh, minimum amount for staking on uh, Lido is no minimum. On Rocket Pool is 0.01 ETH. Um, of course, you can buy smaller denominations than that on um, 
on the exchanges but it's not worth it because the gas will be more expensive <laughs> than the actual amount that you hold um and then a requirement to launch validator um for lido it's only pre-approved for rocket pool you need um 16 eth plus 1.6 eth or of course 8 eth plus 2.4 eth of rpl um node operators 30 versus 2700 open source yes and yes so then it says which ones should you choose so there's a quote here it says overall we conclude that rocket pool is a better option for users who value highly value the decentralization of ethereum and wish to strengthen it so there's like key highlights over here this so it's this little article that they have over here like comparing um comparing the different um protocols um sorry it goes up here um yeah so you can definitely go and give that a read if you are interested in that but i covered almost all the key information so thanks coin uh, coin codex for sharing that um yeah and then they go on to say as well meanwhile users who prioritize profitability and liquidity should choose lido as lido is currently offering a better apr and the st token has stronger liquidity than our eth of course the apr stuff is in flux there have been days when um you know uh, our, uh, rocket pool is offering um, higher amounts of course those days are limited like you know overall like lido does offer a higher amount of um, rewards but i don't think it's that 20 percent 25 percent increase that they're kind of talking about here the apr i think it's a bit closer than that but maybe other people can share the better numbers than i can um and then uh, rocket pools liquidity is ever increasing um, and uh, getting deeper and deeper which of course is amazing so um talking about liquidity here next we have this um uh, message from pancake swap um saying everyone's favorite decks so it says good morning rocket pool your version 3 farms are now ready on eth pancake swap um stake our eth eth so that's 0.05 percent fee tea and, and cake stake eth btc uh sorry our eth btc 0.25 percent um fee tier and earn cake all while our ETH continues to earn staking rewards for liquidity poolers and then uh, if it's, it says if the apr is loading it means that there's no li uh, liquidity positions in the farm yet so basically uh cake are now incentivizing um our ETH deposits into liquidity pools which of course will further deepen the liquidity available for uh, people who want to use uh, our ETH on dexes um, the two pairs that they're incentivizing are with ETH and BTC which is cool like the ETH pool of course is the deepest one BTC I think I've not seen too many instances of our ETH being um, um, pooled with uh, BTC so that's that's great I guess for people who want to swap across those positions but um, you can now earn cake rewards which of course is really nice for some people if they want to get those like juice juice deals so um, you can earn the cake so if you are interested in that definitely check it out of course do you own risk before uh, providing uh, liquidity to to these uh, pools but yeah you guys already know all of that stuff okay finally we're going to end on this um on this post from um, Mulvard VPN. So Mulvard VPN was one of the VPNs that a lot of people used uh, to route their staking through that. And um, and uh, they are removing the support for forwarded ports. So the, what does forwarded ports mean? Forwarded ports makes it easier for you to connect to other people who have certain ports forwarded as well. For staking, this is really important because you share information with the people on the blockchain. Um, you know, you have to have peers that you connect with. And as you connect to those peers, um, having certain ports open like 9001 and 33, 33 i think um that's off the top of my head i think those are the two main ports that people need to open but um having those ports open makes it a lot easier for you to communicate with other people who are operating on the beacon chain by um mulvard vpn removing that support now means that if you are using this vpn service for your staking like to route your staking through this um it'll make it harder for you to find peers and maybe um, a test you might be missing attestations or potentially even proposals and definitely during sync committees it might make things a little bit more difficult for you so um people are kind of unhappy about this because you know they paid for multiple multiple years in one go and now their product is changing on them so from um, july 1st um, they'll remove all existing ports that are configured and they want you to change your uh, services accordingly and um and this he says will you be affected if you don't know what port for forwarding is it, you will not be affected the users that are directly um, affected are users who have active ports and are using them through mulvard as of today so of course you know stakers are using those ports so if you are staking with them um i think it might be a good idea to find out how it's going to impact your service um 
I'm not sure. Like people on crypto Twitter or uh, definitely in um, Discord will be able to give you better information about how it might impact your service. So pop into the Discord and ask some questions. And then if you need to move, they might have some other services that they can recommend to you as well. So on that note, I'm going to stop recording um, and uh, finish today's episode. Like I said, it was a quick one, but um, um, there was some really good stuff covered. So that is that's always good. But I hope you all have a lovely Tuesday and I will see you all soon. Bye.